In this video, I'm going to do a watercolour painting of a crowded cafe scene. So I'm starting out with A2, this is A2 mixed media paper, and I've, um, I've sprayed that with some water just so that the surface is nice and damp. This is a round synthetic mop brush by, it's a, it's a raven brush by, um, who is it by? I can't remember now. It's by, oh, it's by Jackson's, by Jackson's, uh, which is an art shop in the UK. This is their own brand. Um, and it's good because it holds a lot of pigment and stuff. So I'm just starting out with some cad yellow and sweeping that down there. And what I'm doing as I'm looking at the scene in front of me is I'm just looking at it as a set of abstract shapes and I'm looking for the simplest shapes possible which you know I mean I guess this is open to debate but I would say that those super simple shapes are going to be rectangles in any painting and if I can see a light color which is fairly yellowy and not sort of bright pure white then as you can see I'm popping in some some of the yellow so there's, there's another bit over here as well. Now I'm not concerned about getting, you know, my proportions exactly right, but um, you know I just want to try and capture the scene to a certain extent. So there's the yellow done. Let's just wash the brush out here. So I haven't managed to get rid of all of the uh, all of the yellow from the brush, but we'll get some cerulean blue or perhaps a bit of cobalt blue onto the brush and uh, I'm just using I'm just using this little watercolor kit that I used by Dale Rowney so yeah I don't know why I wasn't showing you my brush mixing before but here we go um, so we've got a fair amount of cobalt blue there and then let's sweep some of that down here across here now i've got a splash there but i don't care about that at this stage at all and then the question is you know are you a cauliflower person or not when it comes to watercolor uh, i generally am um, so not, not always not always but um, if i get a few cauliflowers and weird effects to my mind to, to a great extent that's that's why I'm painting in watercolor because if I want a more controlled effect I'll probably use my acrylics but it does depend on my mood on the on the day now what I was doing there as I um, was chatting away is just putting in some of the negative space in between these vertical uh, banister rods or whatever you want to call them railings or whatever that, that are there inside the restaurant I didn't you know trouble myself with counting how many there are I just sort of popped in some shapes um, and then the light coming through the windows on the right back here that's fairly blue but I'm just going to hold fire on doing that for the moment and uh, we've got some darkness here on the right so I'm just going to put in some random vertical sweeps of the brush coming down there and then we'll just put a little I'm tempted to leave it actually I'm going to leave that white for the moment um, that area top right so again just um, cleaning out the brush and now we'll go in with some of this color here which I think is a uh, that is cadmium red I think but mixing it in with the blue has made it a little cooler a little more purpley so we've got some fairly dark colors down here as well dark deep reds and browns so where the people are sat down low and then there's a you know there are people up here as well he's not really wearing this chap's not really wearing a red top but i'll just sweep in a bit of a silhouette there and darken some of those sweet, um, patches of negative space there's another head there another head there so you can see i'm very much making this up as i go along rather than you know getting too tangled up in what's going on now that brush stroke went a little bit awry I didn't mean to make it that large or indeed that shape 
but we'll put another indication of some kind of head there. And then down here, if I grab some of my violet, which you may know is one of my favorites for watercolors, if you have watched before, but we'll put another bit of a head down there. And then another one back here. Um, and then let's, I'll just put a couple of touches of that in there as well. And for now, that's all I'm going to do. So I'm going to let that dry completely. Well, that first layer of paint is pretty much dry now. And uh, I'm happy with uh, this bit of colour I've got going here, the way that those colours have blended together. And I like the little bursts of green which have happened naturally. But for the most part, I used primary colours. So when we're dealing with a complicated scene like this, one way to approach it is to just think about, well, I'm going to use primary colours. And as you can see, I was very, very loose with my treatment um, of the scene there. But now I'm going to switch to using secondary colours. But again, you know, I'm going to not overcomplicate things. So just grabbing a sort of mid green and then a slightly darker green there and mixing those two together. And then let's look at what shapes we could, you know, very loosely interpret interpret as green. Well, to the left of the little patch of light which is coming through the window, I would say we could have some little strip of vertical strip of green down there. And then we'll leave a bit of a gap and put another patch of green. Now, in reality, it's much darker than this in the in the painting, in the uh, in the photo, but um, yeah, we don't need to worry about that too much. Let me just adjust the camera a smidgen. There we go, I think that's a bit better. Um, and where else is there green? Well, there's not a huge amount, um, but it's certainly a lot darker for the most part down here. And I think I could make a strong argument for many of these shadows being more reddish than I'm putting them in, but we can compensate for that later. And I think that's more or less it. Just dilute what I've got on the brush and we'll perhaps just put a lighter bit of green going across there and down there as well. So switching to pure CAD orange now for my, for my next secondary colour. And again, I can kind of look around and see where there might be a bit of orange. So the, the frame of the mirror off in the background here, it's kind of more gold or brass, but orange is going to work fairly well within the realms of my painting. And then there's a poster on the wall back here. So I'll put in a bit of a reasonably rectangular block of orange there. And then the people's faces have got some orange in them. They're much darker than I'm painting them, but nevertheless, I can add a couple of patches there. And then we need some people down here as well. So we'll suggest a face there. Then one back here and maybe even hint at this guy in the foreground just there. And then finishing our secondary colours, here I've got some of this, uh, I think it's permanent rose, mixed with a bit of phthalo blue. So that's going to give me a purple. And again, we look to see where I might like to add some purple. So nothing is particularly jumping out at me, but yeah, this, this chap's top. It's kind of purple there, or certainly dark. And then 
the lady here we could begin to hint at the purple top there and maybe the lady with her, her back to us her coat is purple and then I mentioned earlier about darkening some of these shadows now I like this patch of paint more than I do the reality at the moment so what I'm going to do is just use this purple to begin to put some darker areas in for this picture frame we've got going here maybe it's a photo maybe it's a painting I don't know and then just going to put a diagonal line going that way or maybe a couple actually just to suggest the plane of that wall going back and then some of these gaps between the banisters could do with being a little darker and let's put another person back here off in the distance a couple of details on that poster and then a bit of a, a bit of something reflected in the mirror on that back wall so now that we've got some uh, primary and secondary colors down in a very loose fashion we can start to have a bit of fun not that not that the first stages haven't been but um, we can make use of what the watercolor has given us so you can see here this blob of paint has kind of formed a reasonable head shape but then things go a bit astray over here so coming in with my ballpoint pen just going to adjust that and put a bit of a hairline in for this guy here and you know I'm definitely not copying the reference I, I didn't actually mean to do that by remark I meant to leave that little boundary of watercolor untouched but there we go um, so just being inspired by the reference and just want to use it enough to get a reasonably realistic profile of a human now this patch of paint has come out far bigger than the lady who's off in the distance a little bit but again we'll make use of what we've been given and uh, give this person a hairstyle now we've got a bit of a, a run there so I'll incorporate that into some kind of collar or something um, but we can pop in you know, the beginnings of the outline of a shoulder and then this person here in my painting is looking more distant than in the reality when this person is really bigger so you know it's it's a little bit um well one could say confused i suppose but I, I quite like that effect you know we won't define everything perfectly so i might even leave that one like that actually and then what about this face here uh, i think i'm just going to what well, that was originally meant to be a face but i think i'm going to leave that for the moment now that we've got some nice lights hanging from the wall so we'll put that in and then there's another one back here and another one coming from from somewhere So that alone is beginning to kind of refine things a little more now for the banister i definitely need to define some kind of upper line here at some point but i don't want to go to, you know i don't want to describe the entire railing so now this little edge here i like quite a lot the left hand side is perhaps not quite as good so let's let's do that with the biro 
and then put in a bit of a feature there. And I suppose I could put in a quick line just across that bit. Again, we'll make use of part of the edge that the wash has given me. Now, this lady here, the way I've got this patch of paint, it looks like she's wearing some kind of scarf, so we'll go with that. I don't know whether they have sunglasses on their head, head or not, I can't quite see. Oh, hang on, is that even on camera? Hopefully it is. Let me just adjust that for you. Yeah, I think it was just about. So, uh, I've got a, the beginnings of a person here. I'm just adding some sunglasses to the head. And we'll give them some hair and some shoulders. And going to come back in with the paint now, I think. So I'll stick with the, uh, the flat brush. I've got a bit of yellow ochre there mixed in with a little bit of leftover brown from the edge of the palette. Still got this patch of tube watercolour violet. So I'm going to mix those together. And really, it's a bit of neutral tint over here. Really, I'm just trying to mix up a nice dark colour. And then what I want to do now is just start to enhance the highlights where appropriate by putting some darks around them. So I quite like the colour of the woman's hair I've got here. So for that reason, I'm going to put a dark patch of this colour next to her hair. And then if I've got another post here, that means I need another bit of shadow down there. And then I don't want to use the same shadow colour everywhere, but I can, this woman's in the foreground, so let's, let's darken part of her top. We'll leave some little bits showing as if she's wearing, you know, a blouse or something. And maybe the light's catching her on the right hand side a little more than on the left. So we'll just hint at that there. And then again, just looking around the painting, is there anywhere else I want to use this colour? Well, well, we'll just do a quick line down there and there. So deliberately not as heavy as the other two shadows. So two, two patches of shadow, two patches of shadow. And then I'll come over here. I'll just put one in there to break things up a little bit. And then perhaps I could have I've used kind of a purple there. What I will do is grab a bit more of the violet from the tube and we'll just begin to put a bit of dark around the, the light here. But I'm deliberately keeping, I'm painting horizontal brush strokes to keep that edge around that lantern a little jagged. We'll do that. That's enough of that purple for now, I think. So let's go to, um, let's just go to some cadmium red again. But we'll get um, more of that on the, on the palette than we had before. So it's a thicker mix. And Again, I like the colour of this lady's top or what, you know, what's being created by the washes. So we'll, next to her, we'll just uh, sweep in some red. And then again, looking round. Now, I'd sort of, I'd originally intended to put another person here, but I don't think I want to do that anymore. I've got a shoulder coming up here and a shoulder coming down there. So I'll just hide, or not hide, but just sort of put a line of, Red through there and come up to that kind of biro drawn post that I'd put in. 
and then you know given that we're not trying to depict reality too closely we'll put a silhouette of a teacup in there or something but we won't even give it a table to uh, to stand on and then we'll keep the red going just a little bit I think that's I quite like the way that's working in the foreground so let's put a patch here and perhaps another weird shape there So this was going to be a person's head, but I, I feel I don't really need that anymore. So um, what do we want to put there is the question. Let's, let's, not, let's not think about it too much and just put... Um, some interlocked uh, rectangles there. black with a bit of ultramarine blue so that, again the sunglasses have got some nice washes going on so I, I don't want to obliterate everything that's in there but we'll use that color we'll perhaps put a couple of buttons down the that coat and then we've got light hair I'm probably going to keep the hair here fairly light so let's darken this lady's hair I'll use some of that same colour without worrying about being overly precise to pop in some of the frames of the lanterns there and being honest I, th I wish I'd made those lines a little finer than I have but you know it's, it's kept it loose at least so we'll Put a couple of verticals down there with the same colour. So switching to a small round next, I'm just going to add some, some pure yellow ochre. Give this lady some hair. And part of me is regretting putting that on too thick. So let's just move that around. That's a bit more like it. Move that around a little more with the water. Then we're coming in with some, I think this is a lizard and crimson. So I hinted a, a bottle of some kind on the table there, coming with one of the darker greens. So it's got some kind of label on it. And then grab some raw umber. So there's some sort of shadow being cast there. And that 
perhaps a bit of burnt sienna actually let's get a bit of burnt sienna on the brush I'm mixing it in with uh, the little bit of orange I had before and let's uh, just use that up here just to break up this area I quite like that colour, so let's um, add a bit to the face there, so there's a bit of shadow. I've just added, added some black to that red, and so what I'm going to do with that is just uh, sweep that through there and then hopefully fairly quickly um, I'm going to try and lift out a little bit of that wash which isn't working as well as hoped that, that's one of the downsides actually of the um, of the mixed media paper. Um, lifting out like that what tends, seems to work a lot better on watercolour paper I find than, um, than it does on mixed media paper. Let's get some some more Actually, I was going to go with cad yellow, but I'm just going to grab some of this lemon yellow. Which has come out rather green. But I don't mind that there. Just put a hint there on that light. So this little scene of a lady walking a dog in the shallows of the River X. This is where the mouth of the river just comes into Exmouth. And uh, I painted this one plein air, just sat on the pebbles of the riverbed. Beautiful sunny day. And it's okay, you know, uh, definitely some stuff which needs finishing or working on. But I quite like the scene, kind of an illustrative style here. I didn't get enough water on the paper. Um, this next one is rather better I feel. So it's quite simple and there are definitely a few faults in it but you can see the washes I've created here are more dramatic and effective. Um, the proportions of the boat aren't quite right, this guy's arm is too short but I still quite like the feel of this one. Uh, again this was painted completely outdoors on, a, on that same beautiful sunny day. So tough tough to beat painting uh, in this particular spot. It really is a nice uh, picturesque area. Now, it's not always that nice in terms of weather at Exmouth. So this one was actually painted when we parked our car at Exmouth Seafront in the hopes of looking at the beautiful view. But these four people <laughs> sat down on the bench in, in front of us because we'd taken the last spot, the last parking spot, because it wasn't that warm a day. So I thought, well, I'll do a quick sketch and um, this was done with ink tents and a water brush and a little bit of ballpoint pen as well. Now this one I'm quite happy with. The, so this, I think the rest of these were all done from the car sat uh, at Exmouth Seafront on different days. So as you can see a couple um, flying a kite on the beach. P again painted with the water brush so the, the washes aren't quite so fluid. I find that when I use the water brush I kind of get more of an illustrative style used a unipin marker for some of the line work and I put this one away because I wasn't sure if I wanted to do any more to to the figures and now looking at it again months later I'm glad that I stopped where I did 
because I like the simplicity of this one quite a lot. I think I think it tells quite a nice story with without too many marks. Similar spot, different day, family. I think these were grand, you know, granddad and um, grandma playing with three grandchildren, playing cricket on the beach. Um, Need some work, you know, every, a lot of just simple suggestion here, but I'm quite happy with the figures and the sense of fun captured. And again, and that last one was created using the water brush. This is another one. This lady was just sat on the seawall. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll capture her and the scene behind. Looking out to Dawlish Warren and uh, that kind of weird massive rock which characterises the beach on the opposite coast. So just to kind of give you a, a clue, the first couple of paintings where I was sat on the riverbed, that's kind of off in this direction, up along the water, I guess, maybe a mile, three quarters of a mile, something like that. Now this one um, is, you know, more or less unfinished. It's of a similar scene. I'll film that better later, um, or I'll photograph that later. And uh, just got somebody wading in the, in the shallows, somebody else walking on the shallot, on the, you know, on the wet sand, and a couple off exploring the rocks, again, looking out to that characteristic big rock across the water. So as you can see, these are very much sort of illustrations, um, but something I really enjoy doing. And then this one's unfinished as well. Uh, father and daughter kind of rock pooling, couple kind of exploring the rock pool there, a big inflatable boat, motorboat coming past and then looking off into the distance. So just some ideas from Exmouth which might influence my choices going forward. So for those of you wondering about the Farm Animals Commission, this is the first almost completed drawing. Uh, this is obviously of a belted Galloway cow with a couple of cattle off in the background. And I've used pencil and ballpoint pen for this one. So I'll keep you updated as I do, you know, more and more of the images. So back to the painting of the day, and I've been debating whether to use my Unipin ink marker to enhance some of the line work on this lady here with the sunglasses on her head. The idea being that that would make this the main focus of the painting and it would push the other figures back into the distance. But for now, I've decided to leave it as it is because I like the fact that um, it's things are fairly poorly defined and it's all kind of a blend of shapes and, and figures. Um, I definitely would have preferred to have treated the three lamps up in the top right corner differently. But on the whole, I'm happy with the overall effect that I've achieved there. So I'm going to leave this one as it is for now. And much like the kite on Exmouth beach painting that I showed you a little bit earlier. Uh, I'll have a look at it, you know, in a few weeks or months time and see how I feel then. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. Thanks again for watching.